How much time do I have? Not much. Okay. Um, blah, 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 whose general credentials he, he, um, he can then investigate. The last bit. Um, if some principles are found to be involved in all or even most of our knowledge, an assessment of the reliability of those principles could be an assessment of all or most of our knowledge. Okay, so before I get back to the notes and before I, I sort of process everything, I just want you to think conceptually because now, now um, this is this is the tail end. This is the last few minutes of the lecture, so now we can sort of solidify all of this "quote unquote" ghetto philosophy and sort of sort of loose talk with something more systematized and processed, something more refined. The idea is we recognize the twofold at least twofold inability to discuss the contents of our epistemological knowledge by analyzing individual beliefs. Since this twofold inability results in the collapse of the assessment of the sum total of the contents of our epistemological knowledge, we then can move to large classes of beliefs as a better means, as a more effective, more efficient means of assessing the sum total of the contents of our knowledge. Since we're talking about large classes of beliefs, we have to find, according to Stroud, what those beliefs in here, in, right? What is, and in, in presentation, but the idea is, what, the, the way in which our beliefs in here that we need to identify the way in which our beliefs in here. Thus, once we do that, we have the basis for our belief. Now, multiple beliefs then, so we have belief one, belief two, belief three, and such, belief n. All of these beliefs, right, we'll see in here in some foundational point, right, that there is a substrate for these beliefs. And we'll call that substrate X. X, then, according to Descartes, is a principle. It's something so foundational that it makes sense of the individual beliefs. So, rather than talking about the individual beliefs, since we've recognized a two-fold critique for why we shouldn't talk about the individual beliefs, rather than talking about it, what we do is we get rid of the beliefs and we just make an assessment of the substrate, of the principle. And the principle will define, identifies sort of P1. So the idea then is there are much, much fewer principles than there, than there are beliefs. This is a very important point. There are much fewer principles than they are beliefs. Why? Because beliefs are consolidated into principles in this Cartesian sense. Right? Beliefs are, now we're, now we're technical, right? And even if you are good in epistemology, you might not have recognized this, so this is more open to multiple levels of analysis. But the idea is, I mean, it's actually rather simple, is that with respect to the consolidation of our beliefs, our beliefs consolidate into principles. Thus, there are always going to be, with respect to the content analysis of the sum total of our epistemological knowledge, less principles than there are beliefs. There will always be more beliefs than there are principles, because principles are sort of the warehouse of beliefs. If you say, they store beliefs in a vulgar sense. Right, so we'll have, you know, uh, maybe P1, P2, P3, just roughly, uh, and, and this set can talk about the sum total of all of our knowledge because all of the beliefs have sort of, sort of um, uh, been consolidated into these very, very uh, specific points. I just, I, I wanted, one quick point before I move on. The analysis of the pre-Socratics um, is very, very important at this point, right, because the pre-Socratics um, attempted to say that everything within existence was reducible to, right, it's reducible to water, it's reducible to air, it's reducible to fire, it's reducible to the boundless, it's, a, it's reducible to what have you. The idea is that it's reducible to number in Pythagorean sense. Now, all of the attempts of the pre-Socratics to reduce the sum total of existence to an individual substance at that point, or that individual thing, grounding, was similar, it was a, a similar approach, right? This is not necessarily a Cartesian attempt, right? This goes back to the origins of Western philosophy, 
And the idea is that the pre-Socratics did exactly the same thing. That water was the res water was the source. It was the foundational principle. It was the foundational building block for all of the universe because everything was reducible to it or to fire or to number or what have you. Right? Exactly the same idea. Instead of looking at individuated, itemized beliefs, what we do is we consolidate our um, beliefs into something more primordial, more foundational. Those are principles. And a fewer principles then can lead us to a better understanding of the contents of our knowledge. Okay, now I can draw the picture and it should make sense. So this will be the last thing that I do. So we have the incorrect approach, right? This is going to be the wrong approach. Okay, this, is, this is the wrong approach. And the wrong approach is that here I am, the perceiver, and I am trying to make sense of the contents of my knowledge. This square represents the contents of my knowledge. And I say, leaving, leaving the house with, I don't want to write the whole thing, leaving the house with wet here, um, cold caused by winter, so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. Right? Instead of itemizing, Right? Instead of looking at this, and I should probably draw the picture so that the picture is clearer, because there's just one nuanced bit. Right? Instead of looking at, and this is super ghetto at this level, right? instead of looking at point one, bullet point two, bullet point three, bullet point four, in an itemized sense, that's the wrong approach, individual belief assessment, the, the, the point is to look at it like this, which will be right. This will be right. To look at it like, in discussing the contents of our knowledge, if the contents, for example, for some really trivial mundane thing has to do with how we acquire coals, exactly the same set, if you will. Right? Exactly the same, actually, I'll, I'll be more specific. Exactly the same um, individual beliefs within the set, right? Leaving the house with the cold, winter, blah, blah, blah. But instead of looking at each of these beliefs as individuals, the difference between this picture and this picture is that this picture has a bracket. Right? We, we attempt to consolidate this information rather than me itemizing individual beliefs. All that I do is I itemize a much larger, this is a super ghetto version, right? I want to end really simply because once we move to the next section, we're going to complicate it. Instead of looking at individual beliefs, I now just look at a consolidation of those beliefs, right? I've taken the beliefs and consolidated. So, to be technical then, the image really looks like this, right? The image really looks like this. It's that the perceiver, we have two perceivers, right? Right? The perceiver doing this, where B stands for belief, Is wrong. Rather, what we do, obviously in this would be, this whole thing would represent the rather what we do is we consolidate B1 through Bn as a principle P1 and what we're analyzing is the content information of this, not that. And that's, that's the point. All of this was to get you to that point. So if you get this point, you understand the importance of this, right? And this is why I said it's going to be important that you get this because later we're going to complicate this quite a bit. And I do think in a contemporary setting, sense, this has profound implications, right? So rather than looking at the individual itemized beliefs for the twofold problem that it causes, we consolidate these beliefs via sort of bracketing, if you will, just to be vulgar, um, into a principle. This principle, in Cartesian terms, is more foundational and thus, and thus less, quote unquote, numerous in uh, assessing the content knowledge of the sum total of our epistemological understanding. And um, it's a more efficient way of talking about and discussing the contents of our knowledge. So we ended, hopefully, um, hopefully with more questions and answers. 
And that's a good thing because that will be addressed in section 1.2, I guess. The next, yeah, section 1.2 of the analysis. Uh, with that, I've run out of time. I've run out of time. So I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. Have a good day.